Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome back to the Sims 4 speedrunning video or welcome to the channel if you are new here. Sit in today's video, I'm going to be building in the world of Mount Karebi, which is the world that we got from the expansion pack, the Sims 4 Snowy Escape. And I'm going to be building a Japanese countryside family home. So this house ends up having two bedrooms and two bathrooms and it's built on a 30 by 20 lot. Now this week, I just had this massive sudden urge come over me and I just really fancied sitting down and building something in the world of Mount Karebi in this more like traditional Japanese kind of style. I then discovered it's also been a really long time since I've actually shared any build in this world. It's almost been a year since my last build in this world, which I actually don't even know how, how that happened because normally I like to try and rotate the worlds that I build in every single week. So then, you know, every single world gets its own love and appreciation. I build in different styles that way. And then also that way, it just kind of, it makes it so much fun because you're building in a different style every single week and you kind of have to like switch it out and stuff. But yeah, somehow it's been like almost a year since I've shared any build in this world. And so it was definitely overdue, but yeah, I just really fancied building something in this world. And so I built this little Japanese countryside family home in kind of like the more countryside area of Mount Karebi. And yeah, this is how it turned out. And so I really hope you guys like it. But getting on and talking a little bit more about the build. So as you can see, I've already come in and I've already pretty much built the whole main structure of the build, already done all the different bum pelts, the roofing, the wallpapering, even the window placement. Like I've pretty much done a lot already. And it is because the house itself is quite, it's quite small. It's quite a reasonable kind of size. Like you, your Sims don't feel like they're gonna stumble over everything, but it's also like a nice size for like gameplay if you've got a smaller family. Like I said, the house ends up having two bedrooms and two bathrooms. There is one bedroom upstairs and then one bathroom and then one bathroom downstairs and then another bedroom. It's kind of like separated in that kind of way. I would have liked to have had the bedrooms upstairs, like both of the bedrooms. But the thing is, you can see, cause I'm currently doing the floor plan, the upstairs ends up being very squished. And if you would have seen, I end up placing down three different small little cubed rooms. If you're wondering what that is, ends up being the bathrooms in this house or one of the bathrooms at least, which I understand might be a little bit confusing. So let me explain. Basically in Japanese architecture, it's very common to have separate rooms depending on what you want to do within the room itself. So what I've learned, to be honest with you, I've actually learned this from doing speed builds and doing voiceovers and from you all educating me in the comments. But something that I've learned is in Japanese bathrooms, you don't walk in and you have your toilet, your sink, your shower and your bath all in one room. It's kind of like separated into different rooms depending on what you want to use. So uh, for example, in this house, you'd walk in to the bathroom, but it's actually the sink room. It's basically like an undressing room. And then there's a door to your left, you go into that room and it's literally a bathtub room. Like it's a quite literal bathroom. It's just got a bathtub in it. And then if you go back into the room that's got the sink in, if you chuck a right and go through that door, there's a separate room for the toilet. Now, I've done builds with this kind of floor plan before in the past, but I've never managed to do three separate rooms, I don't think anyway, for each of the individual, I was about to say activities, it's not really an activity going in the toilet, but all the different individual plumbing items, I've never really been able to successfully do a floor plan like this. And so I was really happy with the floor plan for this house. Like I said, I would have liked to have had both bedrooms on the upstairs portion of the build because I feel like that might be more traditional. I'm actually not sure about that one. If you know about how... Japanese bedrooms are laid out and if they're more so commonly on the upstairs or downstairs please let me know because that is something that I am actually not aware of but I I just basically didn't have the space unless I was going to be building a like an object baby nursery or an infant's room or a toddler's room some sort of sim that requires their space it just it wouldn't have been doable and also wouldn't have fit in for the family that I envisioned living in this house for my save for because I did build this house for my save now, the family that I built this house for, they're a pre-existing family in the world of Mount Karebi. They live in the more like, I want to sort of call it like the city area of the world when you enter a brand new save file. But for my save, I have decided to switch up a little bit because their household bio doesn't really match up to where they're originally located. So the family that I'm talking about and the family that's going to be living in this house for my save file is the Nishidaki family. I really hope I pronounced that correctly and I'm really sorry if that's not how you pronounce it, but it's a household that consists of three sims. There is a granddad, a grandmother, and then also a granddaughter. Now their bio kind of 
states two different things. One thing, they live with their granddaughter because her parents passed away and you know, she had to move in with Nan and Grandad and that's why she lives with her grandparents instead of her parents. But then it also says that the granddad of the household isn't a massive fan of one particular townie in this world who is basically like this modern developer and he's meant to be like building up the world and making it more modern and stuff. But to me, when I initially read that, I was thinking, well, hang on, if you're not a massive fan of like modern development and like built up areas, why do you live in the more city area of the world? Like it just did not make sense to me. And so I thought, well, I'm just going to move you to the countryside and you're going to live here instead. And so, yeah, this is basically the Nishidaki's new house in my safe hole. I also felt like having this household have a more like traditional Japanese kind of style house made more sense to kind of like in line with their traits and also like their hobbies and skills and stuff. Because if you actually look at the individual skims, skims? <laughs> not Kim Kardashian, if you look at the individual sims themselves, you'll notice that they're like, their skills and their traits and just like their interests would more so be suited to the countryside. So for example, the granddad of the household, he's really into fishing and gardening. He is quite adventurous, but unless he lives up in the mountains in like the snowy area, of the world of Mount Karebe. There isn't too much difference to where he lives in terms of like his, his traits, but the grandmother, the grandmother loves the outdoors. Like that's one of her traits. She's a proper sim, so she's a little bit more like traditional. When I say proper sim, by the way, um, that's an actual trait in the game. I'm very much aware that I use the word proper a lot when I, it's just my general vocabulary. Like when I talk on a day-to-day -day basis, I, I say proper a lot, but proper is a trait in The Sims 4 from the Snowy Escape Expansion Pack. Basically, it sims are a little bit more traditional Traditional. They have like a respectful in, like introduction. They they don't really like conflict. Like they're a little bit more of like a, a traditional kind of sim, if you get what I mean. So that is the trait. They're proper. But yeah, I just I felt like this family just belonged in the countryside, and so I decided to move them over here. There is also a teenager in the household, like I mentioned. Now the teenager has traits of being cheerful and then also adventurous, and they have skills in fishing fitness and snowboarding and also comedy but it doesn't really that comedy is just kind of like an extra bonus like in terms of like their key like what they like to do on a day-to-day -day, on a saturday or a sunday or something what are their hobbies the teenager is very much into snowboarding and going fishing and to me this little countryside area of the world is like the best place to fish just because it is so beautiful and there is so much like body of water all around it it just makes more sense for this family to live here and so yeah that is pretty much why i decided to move them over here but you can see that i am currently going around in the garden and basically just trying to section it off to be different activities in each different little section so going back onto the household pre-existing traits like i mentioned that the grandfather has skills in gardening i also want to make it so the grandmother is going to have a few different skills in gardening as well because i really love the idea of the grandmother being this really sweet little old lady she already has some skills in cooking and gourmet cooking as well as logic but i love the idea of her having chickens and going out into her garden and picking all these different like watermelons and pumpkins and aubergines and i just love this idea for her she also looks like she's the kind of grandmother that would have a garden i'll, I'll pop a picture of her on the screen so you can see what i look like she just she looks like she should have some sort of like little sweet traditional japanese house in the countryside who has chickens and she often harvests all the different crops and stuff like she just looks like the sweetest little sim and so yeah, you know, i think i'm gonna make it so she has some skills in gardening but you can see that i just finished off to some extent the little like garden portion of the back garden or like the the crop portion if you want to put it that way of the back garden it's basically like a little area your sims can go into they can do some gardening they can harvest you know pumpkins or aubergines or lettuce or just something like that all the different oversized crops your sims can grow there i placed down at five cottage living planters and there is five different oversized crops in the game and so if you want to you could have one of every single oversized crop but i've already come in and got my sim to play test them crop planters and i think i placed down some watermelon and then also lettuce of memory but feel free to delete them but you can actually see around the planters themselves i placed down this little kind of like stone fence thing around them kind of like wrapping around the planters now this is something that i've done before previously in the past and i just love the look of it basically these little like stone fence pieces they're from the live edit menu 
from the Journey to Batuu game pack. What I did is I basically just pulled them out of the catalogue. I sized some down ever so slightly. That way, when I like joined them together, they wouldn't overlap. And then, yeah, they, they kind of look a little bit more intentional rather than just like the soil plonked down. Because something that I find is often, if you place down these planters from Cottage Living into some certain world, they can look a little bit like out of place. It literally just looks like you've got a, a, a clump of soil coming out of your ground. But if you kind of like section them off, have like a little fence around them, it looks a little bit more intentional. And also I was thinking, well, maybe they're placed down there to stop like weeds from growing onto the crops or something. Maybe like they're intentional for like the garden's purpose or something. But either way, I, I really like the look of it. And so, yeah, I plopped them around the planters. But currently, as you can see, I've just moved over into the next section, which is like the little animal house situation. Now, like I said, the grandmother of the Nishidaki household has a trait of being a loves outdoors sim, which to me, loves outdoors, loves everything on the outdoors. That includes gardening and that also includes animals. And so for this house, I wanted to make it kind of like a feature to have all these different smaller animals on the lot. I would have liked to have maybe had space for like an animal shed, so like a cow or something, but I'm building a 30 by 20 lot wasn't really doable if I wanted the, the, the rest of the garden to also be a little bit more traditional and have like a meditation area and then also have all these different features. And so I decided to opt for a little tiny animal section that consists of a chicken coop and then also this little custom made sheep and goat house if you want to put it that way so if you're familiar with the horse ranch expansion pack which is currently the latest expansion pack for the sims 4 i'm saying currently because we've recently just had some news that we're going to be getting another expansion pack this year which i don't know if you've heard that but yeah we're getting another ep this year which i was actually very pleasantly surprised about but we'll speak about that later on either way with the horse ranch expansion pack we got the ability to have baby sheep and baby goats in our game and they're just so so cute like they just jump around everywhere they're just so joyful i love baby sheep and baby goats and so in this household i really wanted to make some sort of like little section for them but for me one of the downsides with the horse ranch ep is we have these really cute little small joyful animals but they don't have a house like they don't have a bed to sleep in like they you can literally just plonk them anywhere and they'll just run around and well I say they jump around they don't even run around half the time they just they just jump everywhere and to me if i want my sims to have these smaller animals my sims take care of their animals i want them to have a bed to go to sleep in at night time and so i decided to make them a tiny little animal house basically what i did is i used some wall dividers that we got from the dine out game game pack. i was about to say expansion pack then the dine out game pack and then i got this roof decoration which is from the modern lux kit and i basically moved objects this roof decoration on top of the wall dividers and it looks like some sort of like little miniature goat and sheep house i then also plonked down the horse ranch like little horse bed into it so hopefully they'll be attracted to that because throughout gameplay i've now discovered that baby sheep and baby goats are kind of attracted to that like hay bed from horse ranch and so i plonked that down into it and i was thinking of a night time that's where they go to bed i just love this idea it's honestly one of my most favorite features of this build like one of my favorite parts is this tiny little goat and sheep house it's so simple but to me it makes me happy because now they've actually got somewhere to like go of a, of a night time or at least seem like they go into that area but then also in that little like fenced in area i placed down a chicken coop i placed down some hay barrels i also did fence in it probably doesn't look like it because i use some live edit fences which in actual fact you can see that i've used them same fences over here in kind of like this back garden area these like bamboo fences they kind of got like some sort of hedge to them i use them to kind of enclose the animal area but i don't know if you would have noticed kind of like when i started at section off the garden I basically placed down like a normal fence into the game and then used these bamboo fence pieces to kind of disguise the fence because the thing is with chickens and sheep and goats in the game they they run about or they jump about some of them and then the chickens run about and they can just go they can just go everywhere and sometimes you just kind of want to contain the animals into like their little section and so I placed down a fence and then disguised it with this bamboo fence and then that way even though it looks like it's not a real fence, there is a real fence there. Your animals are not going to be running around and you won't find your goat in like your front room or in your kitchen or something. They are pretty much enclosed into that area. All you've got to do is lock the gate because I did place down a little gate into the animal section. But then as well as that in the front garden, because honestly, there's quite a lot in this front garden of this house. There are so many different like gameplay things in this house, more so focused on the outside in terms of like different activity and skill building items. Don't get me wrong, there's still a handful like 
on the inside as well but i place a lot into this garden because i really just envision the granddad and the grandma just spending a lot of their time out in the front garden tending to the chickens milking the goats and you know shearing the sheep and doing all the different all the different gardening bits and bobs basically but as well as that in the front garden it ends up being like a little meditation area i place down like a little fountain a little meditation stool also place down some rocks and just like different bits and bobs to make it feel very zen and very peaceful and there is also a separate outbuilding which you're going to shortly see me move on into but that outbuilding ends up being a japanese tea house which i don't think i've ever built a japanese tea house before but yeah that's what that little outbuilding ends up being of course if you don't want it to be a tea house you can change it to be whatever kind of like exterior outbuilding you fancy but to me i really try to make this house feel as like traditional as i could possible and to me that is quite traditional for like a little japanese countryside house but either way moving on as you can see i'm just currently going around and furnishing this kind of like little back garden portion now the back i say back, back garden it's more so like a back porch it's not really that big it's very much like everything goes on in the front of the house but then there is a few more activities on like the back garden portion a few more being your sims can play chess out here they can do some yoga they can also use the wash tub and also like the little washing line i was more so picturing that the sims in this household like the household themselves would rather wash their clothes by hand and then hang them on the little washing line rather than using the washing machine and the tumble dryer but then i also know that for gameplay for like say if you want to download this house yourself and you want you to play with laundry the amount of times myself that I have placed down the wash tub and the, the washing line and I've been like, right, this Sims family, they wash all their clothes by hand, you know, they pick all their ingredients from their back garden and they're, they're very much like an off the grid family. And the amount of times the clothes have just built up in my Sims households and then I eventually just cave, end up buying a washing machine and a tumble dryer. And so for just like gameplay perspective, I decided that this household would have both. There does end up being like a little laundry room portion in the inside of this build but i don't imagine that they use it that often and i just more so imagine that this household they more so use the wash tub in this little like closed in back garden area but yeah out in this back garden section your sims can do some yoga they can sit down read a book they can play chess there really isn't too much like i said the main focus on like garden activities is definitely in in the front garden but it was just like some little extra skill building and like hobby related activities i did also add an art easel on like that upper porch bit where the yoga mat is but i do eventually end up deleting it just because i i tried to make it seem like it fitted in and i felt like when where i placed it it just it looked like it was just plonked there which in actual fact i did just plonk it there i just basically tried to fill this house with as many activities as i could possible and i was like okay well i've checked off the logic because we've got like a little chess table outside your sims can meditate and also do yoga so then, you know like wellness is sorted gardening is sorted like all the different exterior skills i tried to like basically place something down in the back garden for them but you know i placed on the art easel and to me it just didn't look right and so i did decide to delete it but if you do want your sims to be able to do some painting in this house it would just be like a simple task of just re-adding it back in but either way moving on as you can see i've now moved on into the inside of the tea house so this is the japanese tea house this is that little outbuilding that i was talking about so in here i basically tried to make it feel as traditional as i could possible now you've got to bear with me i've never been inside of a japanese tea house this is just what i was building off seeing off pictures of pinterest of google images seeing things in like videos and stuff and films i basically just tried to build something that's similar to what i have previously seen and so i hope i've done a good job so in here it basically ends up being like a little room where your sims can come into it there is a kodatsu table i really hope i'm pronouncing that correctly but it's basically one of the tables that we got from the snowy escape expansion pack which is quite traditional in japanese houses it's a very traditional table for sims i say sims in real life people <laughs> to sit down and eat their food on but your sims can do it as well and so in this case for your sims to sit down and eat their food but there is also like a little hot pot that you can attach to it but you can also place down at the little tea station that we got from the my wedding stories game pack you can see that i've just plonked it down onto the table basically your sims can come in here they can pour some tea and they can sit on the sofa and drink their tea unfortunately it's something that i noticed in gameplay when i was placing this house my my sims could pour the tea absolutely no hassle whatsoever 
but my sims couldn't sit at this little dining table and drink it which is really unfortunate i really wish that they would patch it in so your sims could do so because i've played it this whole entire house and my sims can sit on every single seat and they can the whole entire house fully works like your sims can sit on that table and they can eat on that table but something that i encountered in playtesting is my sims couldn't sit at that table and drink tea they would just go onto the little sofa and drink tea which i thought was quite quite bizarre but either way there is also a sofa in there and then i also place down at some tea shelving units which we got that from the snowy escape expansion pack and it's basically just decoration make it look like your sims basically have every single sort of tea that they could possibly ever want into that room and also actually before i forget on the exterior of a little tea house i placed down a bonsai tree must admit often forget that we've got bonsai tree in the sims 4 but it is a base game item i believe and basically your sims can basically trim the tree to be all these different like shapes and styles i believe there is like five or six there might even be more depending on your sims emotions but your sims can trim this this tree and i'm not even sure when they updated it but i noticed that my sim instead of improving in her gardening skill it improved their flower arranging skill which to me was a nice added bonus because i was yet to place down something to improve the flower arranging skill on the exterior of the house but yeah if your sims that trim that little bonsai tree they can become a really good flower arranger but either way moving on as you can see i've now moved on into the inside of the actual house and started off by the front entrance hallway to be completely honest with you i must have tried furnishing this initial hallway into the house at least four or five times i just couldn't get it right and i know it doesn't even seem like the most like interesting decorations and stuff but of the inside of this house i wanted it to feel traditional but then i also wanted it to be a nice mix of modern as well not too modern but like a nice amount of modern hopefully you you get what i mean because a lot of the furniture pieces that we have from the snowy escape expansion pack they are quite modern but then i also wanted this house to be quite traditional japanese i just had a hard time basically but in the end i ended up placing down a side table which is from the cottage living expansion pack and then i placed down some like books and plants on top of it one thing that i did which i did actually really like i placed down this little oh what's it called picnic basket we got it from the cottage living expansion pack and you might have seen i basically went through the debug menu and i placed down some like potatoes i think apples and then like sage basically loads of different ingredients into the little basket itself i was thinking that maybe like the grandma just recently popped to the grocery shop or something and that they picked up all these different like fruit and vegetables and they get to take it into the inside of the house and wash them and put them away and so yeah, I just thought that was like a nice little decorational piece in the in the front entrance hallway. But then off the front entrance hallway, you kind of go up a platform and then back down a platform because I wanted to try and include a lot of platforms in this house because that is quite traditional, I believe anyway, like Japanese houses. And so in this like little like down platform bit, this is where that little like laundry room comes in. So like I said, I, I don't really picture this household to really use these washing machines and tumble dryers. I am also imagine it to be if it's raining and you can't hang your washing out, you've got to use the dryer on the inside. It's kind of like a last resort kind of thing for this household. It did also really nicely fit up that little space because if you are someone that doesn't want to get your sims to wash their clothes by hand and you do just want to have an easy job of just like popping it in the in the washing machine or the tumble dryer, it's already there. You don't have to like try and find somewhere in the household to place it. And then also, to be honest, I wouldn't have really known what else to place in that little space. I could have probably placed down like another little side table, but then I would have felt like it would have been too repetitive because literally a few feet away, like in, in tile form, like three or four tiles away, there was the entrance side table. And so even though I don't picture this household to use it, it just kind of filled out the space nicely. But either way, moving on, as you can see, I've now moved over into this hallway space, which also ends up doubling up to be the dining room now kind of unintentionally i was thinking that the floor plan for this dining room slash hallway thing does kind of align with the storyline for the household that are going to be living here in my safe hole like i said it consists of two grandparents and then their granddaughter and their granddaughter had to move in because her parents passed away to me what i imagine used to be the dining room ended up being her bedroom and it kind of works out because in my mind i'm thinking okay well maybe that used to be the dining room they had to find another space for the dining room table make that into the bedroom and make this like hallway space into the dining room it was not intentional but actually kind of worked out in terms of like the storyline purpose because to me if you're going to move into someone's house and they haven't got like a two-bedroom house they're going to have to sacrifice some sort of room and for like storyline purposes 
it kind of made sense that way to have this kodatsu table in the middle of the hallway it is also just like a nice placement because it's pretty much dead center of the house and so if your sims want to have like some sort of like family gathering family meal together they can all sit down in kind of like the center of the house and yeah maybe put like the hot pot on or something but over here as you can see i'm just cluttering up this little table you can see that i'm using my lamp trick to basically freely clutter up the center piece of the table itself because basically i wanted the hot pot to be on the center of this dining room table but then i wanted it to be like an actual thing that your sims can interact with and if i would have placed the hot pot freely in the middle of the room so it was floating and then try to clutter up the table I don't think the table would have been usable and so you would have seen the way that I did it is I basically plopped down the hot pot onto the table itself and then I moved the table away but then before I did that I placed down these tall standing lamps on the placement of where I wanted to roughly place some cluster down. I then placed down the cluster onto the table itself to get it to the exact height. And then I moved the clutter pieces onto where the lamps was and then moved the table back. That way the, the hot pot is still 100% usable. Like your sims can sit down and put hot pot on, but then there is also a clutter around it. I placed down like some like little salt and pepper shakers, like a little plant, I think also a candle, and then also some like extra ingredients. I think I placed down basil. I was personally thinking it was maybe some sort of like herbs, like seasoning or something but yeah that is why i place down a bunch of different lamps i often get questions still on why i do that but yeah it's basically just so i have some sort of like guidance whenever i want to freely clutter up somewhere but either way moving on as you can see i've now moved over into the kitchen so this kitchen ends up being quite snug but it's cozy it's like a nice kind of snug because your sims still have one free counter that they can freely make anything on like i didn't put any clutter onto one of them just so your sims could still like actually use the kitchen so it's purposeful but i really wanted it to be like a really cozy little kitchen so in here i place down these counters which are from the country kitchen kit and then i use the fridge and then the oven which is from the cottage living expansion pack but then i basically placed down a mixture of different wall cabinets never normally do this but over here by the oven i placed down these like more industrial looking wall cabinets these ones are from base game but then on the other side over here by the fridge i placed down these ones which are from the country kitchen kit basically i really like the country kitchen ones because they have some like frying pans and some little like baskets and tins and stuff but something that i i find if i use them multiple different times in one room it then kind of like takes away the i want to say illusion that they're actually purposeful because there's this theory that some people talk about sometimes in the sims where say for example you want to use a sofa and it's got all these different throws and pillows on and maybe it's meant to look a little bit more realistic you know like a sim has been sitting on this sofa but then you use that same sofa with them exact same pillow things on them and the exact same pillow placement and use them multiple times in one room it then kind of takes away the illusion of that's a realistic thing because where it's multiplied so many different times in one room it just kind of takes it away and then it just looks like you just place down the object a load of different times same theory applies to me anyway with kitchen cabinets and so i placed down some of the ones that we got from the country kitchen kit two different ones one's got like frying pans hanging off it the other one's got like little tins and boxes and stuff and then on the other side where i could have placed down the country kitchen ones i just placed down some clothes cabinets that we got from yeah the sims for base game like some more industrial looking ones hopefully that makes sense but also in the kitchen i placed down like a little kitchen sink there's also a bin and then also a tea making station even though there is already a few different areas in this build where your sims can brew a cup of tea, I still wanted to have a tea station in the kitchen itself. And so, yeah, I placed one of them down into there. But now, as you can see, I've now moved on into the next room, which is the lounge room, the seating room. So in here, I'm not going to lie, I've really struggled with this room, more so because I really wanted to fit a TV into this seating area, but I just could not, for the life of me, manage to make it work. Basically, I wanted to use this fireplace, which is from the Snow Escape Expansion pack because it is one of the best fireplaces in my opinion that we have in the game and where i was using the majority of this dlc anyway i thought i'm going to use this fireplace it fits in with the theme but the thing is when you use this fireplace i don't know if it's just me i really struggle to place down a tv on top of it because i feel like there's just not enough room and this lounge room itself it's quite a small little snug room i couldn't have managed to fit like an extra side table to place down a tv on because otherwise i felt like it would have felt really squished and just felt like it was out of place or something and so 
yeah in the in the lounge room i didn't decide to add in a tv i really hope you guys don't mind but of course if you want to you can definitely add one in if you feel like you can manage to make it work but just for me when i was furnishing it i just i felt like i i couldn't make it work and make it feel like it would have suited the build like fit in with the rest of the house but yeah in the lounge room i ended up placing down the sofa which is from the snowy escape expansion pack as well as the matching armchair and then i also use this really big rug which is actually one of my favorite rugs in the game and it is from the get famous expansion pack it looks like it's been like handed down or something and it was kind of traditional ish and so i felt like it fitted in with this house perfectly but over here as you can see i've now moved on into the first bedroom of his house which is the teenager's bedroom so in here i decided to use this double bed which is from the growing together expansion pack i then placed down this wall decal behind it which looks like some sort of sim has climbed a mountain and it's kind of like displayed on the back wall i placed that down purposely because the teenager in this household wants to be some sort of like sports enthusiast really into snowboarding just loves the outdoor activities that come with the snow escape dlc and so i wanted to kind of showcase that some way in their room i also do end up placing down some skateboards or like skateboard decorations that we got from i believe it was the parenthood game pack but i was thinking it was snowboard you'll see i try and rotate a snowboard and try and make it so i could get this snowboard to be flush in the wall make it look like it was a teenager snowboard and you know they hang it up in their bedroom but i don't know what it is the snowboard object itself i cannot rotate it for the life of me and so i decided to use these skateboards as kind of like the next thing that looks kind of like a, a snowboard of some sort but then in here as well i placed down these curtains which are from the high school years expansion pack i nearly said the paranormal stuff pack for some reason i always think that them curtains are from the paranormal stuff pack but they're not they're from high school years we've just got some very similar ones from the paranormal stuff pack but i used the curtains in this kind of like reddish swatch i felt like it just went with the rest of the house and it also kind of matched the trees because the trees in the exterior some of them are red and it kind of it just tied in the exterior with the interior quite nicely and you know i decided to use these curtains but whilst we're kind of ish on the subject of stuff pack that did just remind me we, we're getting a new stuff pack i don't know if you've heard about it but we're getting a new stuff pack for the sims 4 for the first time in literally what feels like forever it hasn't been forever i think it's been like two ish years roughly something like that but we're getting another stuff pack and it's coming out in literally like a matter of weeks it's called the home chef hustle stuff pack i believe and we're going to be getting like miniature kitchen appliances i know we've got a waffle maker and then also a pizza oven and i feel like we've got another thing as well but we're getting a new stuff pack for the sims 4 and i'm so so happy I honestly didn't think we'd ever see the light of day of them again i honestly thought they were gone i just thought that kits were going to replace stuff packs but no we're getting another stuff pack in the game and then also actually another expansion pack which really surprised me i did not expect this next quarter in the sims to include an expansion pack genuinely just thought it was going to be maybe like a kit maybe possibly a game pack i really did not expect to get another expansion pack this year for the sims 4 because this will now be the third ep this year and yeah i feel like a lot of people were not expecting that but I, I'm, I'm so confused what it could be it says something about like a neighborly expansion pack which to be completely honest with you when i watched the live stream for the first time my mind just went straight to oh another suburban world like another new crush or another willow creek or something which i was extremely happy with i love building like suburban kind of areas but then i have now since watched a lot of different videos and read a lot of different forums and tweets and stuff and a lot of people seem to be saying it could be like some sort of like apartment city based world like maybe another sam Shuno 2.0 i've seen some people speaking about maybe it could potentially be another sort of like asian inspired world i've even seen a few different people saying that they think it could be like an italian world or something but i think that comes from the stuff pack in kind of like the promo picture for like this next quarter there was a pizza because we're getting a pizza oven in the new stuff pack and so i don't think it's an italian based world but it could potentially be like another apartment world i'd love it if it could be but i actually have have no idea but either way getting back to actually talking about what i'm doing right now as you can see i've now moved on to the upstairs i just did one of the bathrooms in the house hopefully you can see what i mean by sectioning the bathroom into different rooms depending on what your sims want to use so your sim could be in the toilet but then someone could also be in the bath 
room like the actual room with the bathtub in and if they haven't got a good relationship they won't get embarrassed because they are behind walls behind closed doors but then i'm going to quickly go around finish this bedroom off this is the grandparents bedroom and that is pretty much it so anyway guys i'm going to end this voiceover right here as always you can download this build via the gallery my gallery id is jessica pie yt or you can search for the hashtag jessica pie yt or just the hashtag jessica pie as always, thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, if you do like my content, then please do subscribe. And hopefully I will see you in my next Sims 4 speedboarding video. Bye, guys.